So, Sheik Oliver, we're going into Cherry Hills Market. Yes. Thank you for setting this day up to meet with these small businesses. I know that uh, uh, your hard work on building uh, business here in the community and supporting the growth of jobs and economic opportunity, it shows. We see it here everywhere we, we look around, and what a great place to be next to the beach as well. well done. So, should we go on in? Yeah, let's do it. All right. And there's the owner, Whoa. Brandon, how are you? Oh, Mr. Ruda, welcome, <laughs> Congressman. There we go. Bobo bump. Absolutely, absolutely. Welcome in, welcome so, in. Tell us what we have. Well, you're standing in our artisan kitchen here at the market, um, and this is where we prepare meals and do cooking classes and different craft demonstrations as well. So I set you up here with a couple of our items that we sell in the shop. Um, we're known for our olive oil and aged balsamic vinegar. Uh, so this is our lemon. Uh, Meyer lemon, uh, balsamic vinegar mixed up with our scallion olive oil. Then I'll make our own spice blends here. Yes, you have market. a reputation for making spices. So is that yes. your spice on top? That's it, right on top. Absolutely. Um, so then you have a, a hot pepper bacon jam. That's one of our best sellers in the shop over a turkey and cracker. And these are pepperdu peppers. Uh, kind of unusual. They're very mild peppers. They're not spicy at all. But the habanero oil that I put inside of the um, goat cheese that are, they're stuffed with gives it a little heat. And then we sell a dark cocoa sugar as well. I have different sugars and flavored salts too. And that's sprinkled right over those strawberry flowers. So by all means, I want you guys to enjoy and help yourselves. Well, it's absolutely beautiful. So Brandon, I know that you have a really interesting history at when you came to open this store. Do you want to tell us a little bit about how you opened up this store? Yeah, absolutely. It was quite the journey. Um, believe it or not, this is our fourth space within Pacific City Mall. Um, we were discovered at the Orange County Fair. Uh, we were approached by the recruiters for the mall back when they opened, and we just did a pop-up shop. Just, you know, temporarily, we had no ambitions to be, you know, owning a storefront. But here we are, five years later, um, and we hopped around different spaces as temporary vendor um, doing year leases until we finally ended up in our permanent home here, uh, right here on the corner, and very happy to be here. Um, it was a long journey again with closing down shop, rebuilding the store. It's grown through the course of its uh, changing and morphing uh, from being upstairs to where little, very little to no traffic is. And now here on the end cap where customers are coming and seeing us first. So it's great. Um, the kitchen again that you're standing in, this is something that was developed recently, uh, about eight months ago. Uh, we started doing cooking classes and they've taken off and due to COVID, you know, it put a little monkey in the wrench a bit. Um, so now we're just doing private events only. Uh, you can do, bring up to a minimum of four people, maximum of 10, we can host them here. So we just started doing that again this weekend, actually. I got a class starting tomorrow, actually. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. What, what so, have been your biggest challenges in opening up your business? Um, reluctance because of retail, I would say. Uh, this is not my background. My background's in marketing. Uh, I worked with Toyota for years. Um, and then I, I was an actor. That's what brought me out here from Ohio. Uh, what part of 15 Ohio? 15 years ago, Cleveland. I'm from Columbus. Get up! Yeah. <laughs> Go Bucks! Right on! Right on. Oh, wait! Yeah, I know. Hey! Right on, very good, right on. I knew I liked you, sir. It's a beautiful place. It's in Pacific City. Uh, wonderful location. You literally walk out your door and see that beautiful ocean. We were admiring it a bit as we actually sit out there for a while. We're like, wow, what a beautiful place, and you have this great venue. Now, I know that some things happen, like you were mentioning earlier before, with with different things that businesses struggle with, right? Sure. So when it comes to, uh, you know, the EIDL and the PPP type of loan, was there, did you, did you leverage any of those opportunities that helped your business out? Yes, we, we, were, we were able to do so. Uh, we applied early on, um, which I think helped us to be able to secure the funds. So we, we, got, we were able to take advantage of both the PPP and the EIDL. Um, and now just working through how we spend that, um, uh, making sure that it's, uh, you know, accounted for properly. There's new instructions uh, that was released just recently. Um, things constantly change, so we're staying abreast as to what's going on. The extension was made too. That's going to help us as well uh, to know how we need to allocate things and do it the right way. So, um, yeah, grateful for it. In addition to that, I must say, I got a, um, a minority loan um, that I was given from Oh, goodness. Uh, InBank. Um, InBank, they were helping out minority-owned businesses. Nice. They found someone 
uh, gave, gave my information to them and reached out, I applied, and I was able to secure some funds for that as well. So um, there's a lot of efforts that are happening now uh, for small businesses, especially black-owned small businesses. Um, I'm seeing a boost in my sales in terms of people coming out to show support from all over Orange County. Um, I'm seeing my customers promote me um, uh, as people are trying to advertise for black owned businesses on different uh, social media sites and things like that. So I'm definitely seeing an increase in sales and business um, due to the times and the climate that we're in. Um, and it's, it's benefiting me and I'm grateful for it. Well, Brandon, I'm so glad that you were able to take advantage of those programs. Part of the CARES Act, and uh, the CARES Act so far has delivered almost a billion dollars uh, to the Orange County area. And one of the key areas of that was the Paycheck Protection Program, which you took advantage of, which we're so glad you did. Yes. Uh, in this district, the 48th district, uh, approximately 20,000 different businesses took advantage of the PPP program, saving over 200,000 jobs, which is really incredible. And it's businesses just like yours, small businesses, the backbone of the United States economy, the backbone of the Orange County economy, the backbone of the Huntington Beach economy. And uh, it's so neat to see people like you who walk away from corporate America, put it all on the line. And I know it's put it all on the line, personal guarantees and everything. You know, this, is, this is your life right now to make sure. this succeed. And uh, uh, we're thrilled to be able to be here with you and, and share this wonderful experience. I'm very happy to open my doors to all of you. You all are welcome back anytime. Well, based on this, we're all staying for dinner. Oh, very good, very good, very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. We have been touring small businesses across Huntington Beach. Uh, we are now at what is arguably the best named tavern in the world, the Wet Dog Tavern, which you opened up when? Uh, well, we opened in February, end of February. That was literally the first time you've opened. The best time in history to open. <laughs> Just before a pandemic. Yeah, yeah, you know, keeping it exciting. Yeah, so out of the gates, all of these well-laid plans, uh, are really just go in the trash can when you're having to deal with this type of a situation. How, how have you dealt with it? Um, you know, I think that uh, whatever's happening in the world, it's our job as restaurants, business owners, uh, this is where people come, bars, restaurants, to unite, uh, to feel together with their community. And so when there was a toilet paper pandemic, we gave away free toilet paper and when there was to-go food only, we gave away to-go food. And when there was to-go alcohol, you know, we gave away a few of those as well. Um, so really, you know, we just try to keep people's spirits up. No politics, no religion in the bar. We just have a good time. So. That's, that's fantastic. And now you are slowly reopening. Obviously, you have to maintain the physical distancing still with maybe not as many tables. You do have some great outside area. Yeah. People should come here and check it out. Yeah. Um, but inside, you're still limited, right? We're, we still don't have any inside dining right now, um, per, per the laws. Um, we, we've been fortunate to have several outdoor dining spaces. Uh, I know the city's working hard to get us more outdoor dining spaces. And let's be honest, this is Huntington Beach, so we're really fortunate to have the weather all year round to do outdoor dining. So I think it's been a really great opportunity to still have businesses open during this time. And, and we have the city manager here and the chamber represented as well. Uh, I know that they have done an extraordinary job of supporting the small businesses here in Huntington Beach and all of the economic development and vibrancy that we see here. Uh, what, what, are, what are the big plans, Oliver, going forward? I think, uh, like Tammy said, the next couple of weeks we're going to be looking at uh, making sure we shut down the street here and get restaurants a little bit more space. But. One of the uh, big successes in helping our community, our business community, the last couple months has been some of the work that you've done with all of the um, CARES Act money that's come down. We recently had a chance to do some small business grants and um, we were able to distribute over 80, 850 grants to local businesses to help try to keep folks afloat a little bit. And we appreciate your support in helping us try to maintain some sense of normalcy during these crazy times. And, and we appreciate everything you're doing. And, and you were talking about the CARES Act, which now has brought back close to a billion dollars to Orange County. A big part of that was the Paycheck Protection Program. Right. And uh, 
uh, over 20,000 businesses in this district, the California's 48th district, were able to receive funding through that, saving over 200,000 jobs. And Sheik, I know that your, your membership is struggling. You know, you, you represent small businesses as the chamber for Huntington Beach. Tell us a little bit about how you're helping them get through this difficult time. Oh, we're lucky. We have wonderful people like Lee Cami over here who is, really helps out with businesses and makes these outdoor dining options an, a great option. You have Oliver, who's doing a phenomenal job with, 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 with your team as well, who's given California so much support. And I feel like, you know, given this time that we've been in, it's, it's been really unprecedented, obviously, in all these different ways. But what's really remarkable is businesses like Cami and how we can help highlight these businesses. We're lucky, we have like the best city, I think, in the world, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, all right, no agrees. Absolutely. Um, and you know, we, we wanna take care of our business community. You know, what, and it's a great thing that the things that you're pushing for, I know that you're also pushing for, uh, you know, the C6s to be taken care of as well. Thank right. you so much. Right. Because need chambers to. need that support yes. to help our business communities, to make them shine. So Absolutely. we appreciate everything you're doing. And, and were you able to take advantage of any of these programs that have come through, either the emergency uh, grants or the PPP, or is that still? We're, we're still submitting paperwork. Okay. Uh, it's a little tough for us uh, just being new. Um, having it opened in February, payroll wasn't existed as long, but um, we're still in the running and we're still hopeful. And actually a lot of our community members have said, oh, you haven't gotten any yet? I'm working with you. So we're, we're more hopeful than other ever at this point. So Good. Yeah. Well, if, if our office can help out, uh, and, and you know, frankly, the office is, our office is here to help all of our constituents, whether it is small businesses or senior citizens or veterans. Uh, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out and, and uh, give us an opportunity to help any way we can. Awesome. Great. Good. Well, we are off to the next place. All right. Wait, but wait, I, put, I, put I hear we have wings here. It's Wednesday. Every Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> all right. 50 cent wings all day long. All, all our right. meat here is local, organic, within 200 miles of farms. Hey. Uh, all of our sauces made in house, the ranch, buffalo, blue cheese, everything nice. you get. So. It, where would the recipes come from? Oh, is it a long-held family secret, or is this uh, something? A little bit here and there. <laughs> <laughs> All no, right. You're not getting them. <laughs> <laughs> should, should Kentucky Fried Chicken be worried? This should be worried. All right. All right. Good stuff. Well, everybody that needs to come here, get your wings and get your beer. That's right. All right. Good. Let's go try some wings. Special congressional recognition presented to Wet Dog Tavern in recognition of local, locally minority-owned businesses serving the Huntington Beach community with friendly service to both humans and furry patrons since January 2020. Yeah. So here we are, our final stop in Huntington Beach, visiting small businesses, and fortunately all of them have food. And this one, wow, <laughs> I can smell the incredible smells from the parking lot. We're at Ham Bones Barbecue. I can't wait to go inside, meet the owner, and have some delicious food. So just walked into Ham Bones, meeting the owner, Keenan. Keenan, got to tell you, walking in here, wow, the smells. I can't wait to order some food and take it home to the family. You've been here how many years now? Almost six years. But six years this location, yeah. you actually started a long time ago. Yeah. Tell us about your history of restaurants. So I opened my first restaurant, I was 22 years old. It was Compton, a small place, 600 square feet. From there, a hole in the wall barbecue turned into ham bones. So we transitioned there. We've been a bellflower about 11 years. So this would be basically the third location. 22 years old and you go out and start your own restaurant. That, that, that's pretty darn amazing. I, not a lot of people have the courage to do that. And, uh, Guess about your age, you've been doing this for about eight or ten years? <laughs> <laughs> about 20, 28 years now. 28 years now. Well, yes. it's incredible. Yes. Um, and so, uh, as I mentioned, i got to take some food home to the family. What do you recommend? I would say tri-tip brisket, macaroni and cheese, baby back ribs, a little everything. All sounds good. So, how's it been for you, though, in dealing with the pandemic, the challenges of maintaining the restaurant when you can't have a full use of the space that you're leasing here. What have you had to do to navigate through these difficult times? I mean, in the beginning it was challenging, but once we've seen the support that we had, we started really pushing towards a takeout with the online ordering, Postmate, DoorDash, Uber. So it has been some adjustments, but overall it's starting to take off. We were a little nervous in the beginning, 
but with the support, it's starting to take off. And speaking of support, we're here with both the, the chamber and the city. Mm -hmm. Oliver's with the city, city manager, does an incredible job of uh, guiding the city and the development, the support of, of businesses such as yourself. Oliver, what's it been like for the, for the city? You know, I think it's been, uh, like everyone, it's been a transition period that we've had to figure out how to operate in this new normal, in this new world. And I think the, uh, the thing that's been, that's been encouraging is even though there's been so much disruption in the world, you're seeing sparkles of brilliance, like mm -hmm. Hambone's figuring out how to, how to operate in this new world. You're seeing so many of these stories of resilience come through. And a lot of that's due to the work that's happening in, in Washington with a lot of the CARES Act money that's coming through the support for local businesses. We appreciate all you're doing to continue to help us grow our community during this really unprecedented time. And, and I know Huntington Beach has done a great job of putting the money from the CARES Act that we were able to bring back to the county to work, supporting small businesses, helping them uh, not just survive, but hopefully uh, thrive as we get through this pandemic. And in fact, the CARES Act in this district uh, helped over 20,000 companies and saved over 200,000 jobs under the che Paycheck Protection Program. And um, she, from you know, representing the chamber and the challenges you have for all of these businesses, in, in addition to the challenges that they're facing to even be able to pay their dues, I, I can't imagine how difficult it is to continue to do your mission. Tell us about that. Yeah, I mean, the chamber of Huntington Beach, we're, we're a very close community. And, you know, I'm, I'm so fortunate enough to work with Oliver, work with Biz Huntington Beach, and all the other organizations that have really come together, I think, during the community uh, to make all these things work. And, um, you know, we're really happy that you're pushing legislation to help out, um, you know, 501c6s. So thank you so much for doing that, because chambers need support too. But I think we've been going around and seeing all, like Oliver mentioned, it's been amazing to hear the story of resilience and the story of, of businesses and how you guys are adapting to the situation. It's really inspiring. Uh, we always want to continue to support you, and we're so lucky we, we're out here today hearing your stories and, and, and hearing all the wonderful things on what you're doing and keeping our, our community so vibrant and alive. So we appreciate that. And, and Keenan, looking around, I see lots of employees here. You, you represent small businesses of, of Huntington Beach, Orange County, America the backbone of our economy. What's it been like to try and keep these employees engaged? What have you had to do? I mean, we, we made some adjustments, but it, overall it's been a blessing. We, 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 at first we cut hours and readjusted, so now with what's going on with the support, we have unlimited hours. So now it's, it's a challenge to try to get the employees in here to help. But with the, with the help from the act, it's been a blessing. So that, that helped us and actually save jobs. So we haven't had to let any employees go. So you did apply for the Paycheck Protection yes. Program? And, yes. And uh, obviously we're successful in yes. getting the loan. Yes, so it, it helped. That, that's good to hear. Well, thank you for everything you're doing. Uh, you're the quintessential American dream, starting a business, age 22, building it into several locations and uh, employing Americans to uh, help feed their families and help our economy. So thank you for everything you're doing. Appreciate you guys for the support too. Thank you. Thanks, Keenan. Yes. Yeah. Well, Keenan, one of the best parts of this job is the ability to recognize companies and businesses such as yourself. This is a certificate of special congressional oh, recognition yes. presented to Keenan Handy, Hambones Barbecue, serving the Huntington Beach community as a uh, pit master of over 25 years with real homemade California style barbecue. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. Thank you.